In this video, we are going to talk about intro and Figma beginner tutorial. So before starting, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Figma is a cutting-edge collaborative interface design tool that's sweeping the design community. Unlike Sketch, which is a standalone Mac OS tool, Figma is totally browser-based, thus it works not only on Macs, but also on Windows and Linux PCs, as well as Chromebooks. It also has a web API that is completely free. Figma also has the benefit of allowing real-time collaboration on the same file. If designers wish to share their work using traditional offline tools like Sketch and Photoshop, they must first export it to an image file, which they may then transmit by email or instant message. Instead of exporting static photos, we can simply provide clients and colleagues a link to the Figma file, which they can open in their browser. This alone saves a designer a lot of time and effort in their workflow. But, more crucially, clients and coworkers will be able to connect more deeply with the work and evaluate the most recent version of the file. What we'll cover in Figma 101 The goal of this course is to introduce you to all of Figma's essential features. We'll do it by putting together a set of app displays. We'll also utilize Figma's prototyping functionality to connect the screens, so you can see how they'll work together when they're constructed as an app. You'll be able to share your prototypes with your friends, or you can continue to develop your design and add it to your portfolio. Set up your Figma account. Going to www.figma.com, clicking sign up, and entering your information is all it takes to get started with Figma. Figma will launch with a start screen similar to this after you've done that. We'll get started by clicking new file. Take a look around the Figma interface. The Figma interface has a simple appearance yet it hides a number of useful capabilities. Here's a rundown of the interface's primary sections. Menu Figma's menus may be reached by selecting the hamburger button in the top left corner of the screen, unlike other desktop design programs. Take a look around these menus to discover what's available. You can also use the search function to find the command you're looking for. Start enter Tools You can easily access the tools you're most likely to use, frames, shapes, text, and so on. All of these tools will be covered in the coming days. Options This section displays additional settings for the tool you've chosen. Figma displays the file name when no item is chosen, as shown above. Contextual choices display here when an object is selected. Inspector When an object is selected, the inspector displays contextual information and settings. Options for the canvas itself are shown above. These will be covered later this week. Having figured out the basics, let's get to work. Throughout these tutorials, we'll be using keyboard shortcuts frequently. This will dramatically speed up your workflow if you start using these shortcuts straight away. Create a frame A frame in Figma is a container for other items. It works like an artboard in Sketch or Adobe Illustrator. Toggle the frame tool with F. The frame tool symbol is also in the options panel. If you're used to Sketch, hit A. For artboard, a frame can be made in several ways. In the canvas area, we may either click and drag, or select a preset frame size from the inspector on the right. Now try both. Practice zooming in and out. You'll probably want to zoom in and out a lot in Figma, especially when working with many frames. Standard zoom commands are plus and. Now, those commands will only focus on the current view center. But there are other useful zoom instructions. Shift 2 zooms to the current selection, Shift 1 zooms to the entire canvas. By clicking on the frame's name, you can toggle between the selection and the entire canvas. Practice using the hand tool to move around the canvas. The hand tool is also useful when zoomed in close or working on a large file. When you press the spacebar, a hand icon appears. Drag and drop to move the entire canvas. Use two fingers to drag on a Mac trackpad to get the same result. Create a text layer. Let's move on to writing some content now. To create a text layer, press D to activate the text tool, then click anywhere within your iPhone 8 frame. Let's type sign in because it'll be used as part of a button design. To close the text tool, press the escape key. Create a rectangle and arrange the layers. To use the rectangle tool, press R drag a button shaped rectangle around the newly formed text. The text is currently buried beneath the rectangle. We'll need to use Figma's Arrange instructions to remedy this. Go to the Layers panel on the left-hand side of the window. Right-click, PC slash Mac, or Control-click, Mac, the Sign-in Text layer to bring up a menu of options. When you click Bring to Front, 
the text will appear on top of the rectangle. Align the text and rectangle. We want the text and rectangle shapes to be centered in relation to one another because this is a button. We may accomplish this using Figma's align commands. By clicking Escape or V, pick the Move tool, and then drag a marquee, rectangular selection, around the text and the rectangle. In the inspector, we can now use the align commands, the interface area to the right of the window. To align the two items, click Align Horizontal Centers and Align Vertical Centers. Add rounded corners to the rectangle, and change the color. Choose the rectangular shape that you just made. There is a setting in the inspector called Corner Radius that allows us to round the corners of any object. Fill in the number of pixels you wish to round each corner by. Simply input a quantity greater than half the object height to max out the corners and produce semicircles at each end of the rectangle. The inspector can also be used to change the color settings. We use buttons to get people's attention all the time, so choose the rectangle in a bright color. By putting in a hex code, hashtag E33, we chose a bright yellow, but you may also click to view the color palette and choose a color that way. Change the font. With the text layer selected, you may alter the font, as well as font size, weight, and color, in the inspector. We've kept Roboto but changed the text to bold and uppercase. Investigate the possibilities. We've reached the end of day 1 of Figma 101. We've gotten our bearings with the interface, tried out a few basic tools, and developed a button for usage in our app. Last but not least, we need to give our file a name. To do so, simply deselect all objects, escape will suffice, and click where it says untitled at the top of the window. Then type Figma 101 app or something similar. That concludes our discussion. All of your files are saved in the cloud with Figma. What do you think of our list? Which thing do you like from above list? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.